Who's starting hash tables? Hash tables are some good shit. Yes. I like hash browns, but better. So maybe before I go into that, let's just take a look at what hash tables do. Kind of like a map. I need to spin that around, change the resolution, change the rotation. Uh, and... All right, hash functions. Hash tables. So what have we been doing with a map? We will take our map, we'll have like, we'll have a key name, like maybe David. And maybe we would have a list of famous Davids. This is just a, a weird example. Then we could do it with Eli, famous Eli's. And to veer away from the Bible, let's add in Juan. <laughs> There's no Juans in the Bible, is there? Juan might be like a person though. That's not John is not Juan. Yeah. That's like a it's spelled differently. <laughs> I understand it's the equivalent. It's spelled differently. You will not find Juan in the English Bible. <laughs> Why does David not change in Spanish? It's pronounced differently, but it's not spelled differently. It's, it's crazy. Right. A lot of the names change, but like David didn't. That's just the pronunciation. Right. Own. 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 All right, so that's how maps work. So what's a hash table? A hash table, rather than having a map, has an array. So these are just the cell numbers of the array. Uh, uh, we'll go, we'll stop at nine, zero through nine. And what we do here is rather than having like, having David, Eli, Juan, we're going to use the number zero through nine to decide what goes in our list or vectors or whatever we're going to use. Uh, what over here is collectively called buckets. Uh, so like, but if I'm using David and Eli and Juan, how do I decide what goes in here? Well, maybe if I were using David, Eli, and Juan, I would go zero to 25. Let's say this goes down to 25 to cover zero to 25 is 26 characters. Mm -hmm. So this would be A, B, C. And I go, if whatever the first letter is, throw it in there. Mm -hmm. So we, we have some function over here called a hash function so that when we take our key and we pass our key into the hash function, the hash function spits out the index for the hash table. So in this case, I could put in one, uh, I don't know where one is, let's see. J is 10. Uh, so if I put in one, uh, it's the 10th character, it should spit out nine. So one will spit out a nine and we can put one in the ninth box. So we could, like David would go in D's here. So David's would go here. Eli would go here. And we have this hash function that takes the key and hopefully does so on an O1 scale, like doesn't have to do a bunch of operations to figure it out. Because the idea is to make it so that you can do a search table. It's like search for, have a giant bucket database 
but search it without having to search the entire database. Uh, this is stuff like what Google does and shit like that. Uh, these things over here are called buckets. Other things that might go in D might be Donna, uh, uh, Danielle or Danny. Uh, Dale. Juan would have Hefe. John. And we could and we could have more than one one. Because where did this is people? So we just keep shoving them back. So that's the idea of what we're doing with hash tables. Let's go in and take a look at some of the code. Uh, let's see, module seven reading. Let's see if that's got one we want to use. Yeah, let's copy this into our program and take a look at what's going on. So this is on the very first thing, module seven reading. I'm copying the code. I'm going to paste it into C++. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to add some info here just to say we are doing first day of hash tables and hash functions. <laughs> okay, so uh, we can use vectors, we can use lists. I'm going to go with vectors. Vectors and lists are pretty much have so many of the same commands. Uh, we got a function, uh, function here that says print multiples. Uh, we'll take a look and see what it does in a second. Our main says constant size 10. And then we have vector int a size. So this is an array size 10 containing integer vectors. So this says create buckets that hold the multiples of the index of the hash table. For int i equals zero to 10, and then zero to 20, we are gonna push back i times j. Let's take a look at what, what, what that's really doing. I'll come back to this page in a second. So on i equals zero and j equals, zero we're pushing back zero push back zero in fact all the j's to 20 are pushing back zero because uh i times j is i is zero so i times j is zero and we are pushing back 20 zeros into a zero so A0 should have a vector of 20, 20 zeros here. And then we get to I equals one, J equals zero to 20. A1 should have one times all these numbers. So one times zero, one times one, one times two, all the way up to 19. When we get to i equals two, j equals zero to 20, we're doing two times everything here. So a two is zero, two, four. I should have used, because this is a vector, I'm gonna put it in vector notation. Up to 38, 
So we can kind of see what's going on. here. <coughs> so, and then we've got a user response, enter a multiple, let's, let's run that, see what's going on here. Let's do it the fun way, rather than try to break down code, let's run it and find out. Uh, seven. So there's all the multiples of seven up to seven times 19 apparently is 133. Yeah, 70 and 63 is 133. And then it shows the full table. So it's showing all the multiples. Okay. So let's see what print multiples is doing. It says print multiples only does one row. The print algorithm, it's going through and doing it like this. We'll look at that in a second. Let's come down to the print multiples. You're passing in the vector or you're passing in the uh, array filled with integer vectors and you're telling it which row to look for. <coughs> So I said, let's go with multiples of seven. It passed in the seven, so it said A7. And it gave me the array of seven. So it just showed all the, all the multiples of row seven. So zero, seven, fourteen, twenty-one, apparently 133. <coughs> Let's modify or let's let's up this to what we were talking about here. Passing in people. Okay. So as this is, this did not have a hash function. This uh, hash table did or this table did not need a hash function. Why don't we make a vector or an array of strings, array of vector of strings, and we'll call it names. And I'm gonna just say 26, rather than saying const size equals 26. There's 26 <laughs> letters in the top of an alphabet. We know how it works. So the idea here, so this is an array from zero to 25, or indent with indices from zero to 25 to align with A through Z. And we want to store names based on the first character, on the first letter. <clears throat> so we're going to do it in the main to start off with to figure out how we want our function to look like how we would do this and then we'll make a function and we can just copy and paste it and make a function. So if I want to peel off the first letter, how could I get the first letter of name? Name zero, right? Now, this is going to give me a capital D. Uh, if we want to have, this is capital D. So 
we either got to choose to make them all capital or all lowercase. Because otherwise I need 52 letters. And they, like, if someone enters David without capitalizing it, it's going to be a mess. So maybe we should, uh, we can two lower it or we can two upper it. Let's go with two lower. <laughs> so I could say temp equals uh, two lower name bracket zero. And this will give me lowercase d. I have strings here, but I didn't include the string library. I'm going to go up and include the string library real quick, and we'll come back to where we're at. I can't just rely on the IDE to do it for me. <laughs> and then what I want is int uh, my value equals the integer value of the temp. And I'll make sure this is working real quick. David's first letter is temp with a value of my value. This is just testing that what I've got here is the right idea. I don't know how many of you guys heard, I, I told this some of the classes, starting in fall of 2025, we're not allowed to teach pre-calculus anymore. Okay, so like, like California, like there's a bill called Assembly Bill 1705. It's designed to, it was designed, it was written to give students options coming in that want to go into STEM to just start at calculus, would take a support course, like a two unit support course to fill in any of your missing knowledge. Yeah. I haven't seen a single person that thinks this is a fucking good idea, except the politicians that wrote it and the chancellor's office of the community colleges. Yeah, we're, we're working on all that. Well, the prerequisite for this class is calculus. Or CSI 2. CSI 1 is calculus. You have to be eligible for calculus. Oh, yeah. So if you're eligible for calculus, everyone will be eligible to take CSI 1 because everyone will be eligible to take calculus. So like that's where I was at Friday. I was with other community colleges throughout the Central Valley from Modesto down to Bakersfield. We were all meeting in Fresno discussing how we're going to do it. We think we have a workaround to give the fucking finger to the because the chancellor's office is the one saying we can't do it. The chancellor's office is like exceeding the law and we think they're violating different laws by what they're doing. Uh, and smarter people than me have like quoted which sections of law that have been violated by what the chancellor's doing. We think we have a workaround. I'm gonna to propose it like Daisy came up with it. If you guys have met Daisy, the counselor for STEM, yeah. she came up with a workaround. I invited her to this thing and I'm glad I did. She fucking like getting a counselor's perspective is great. We got a way around this. <laughs> uh, so we're going to present it to our, the math department in a couple of weeks and see if they'll do it because then we can still teach it uh, and students can still take it because it's important. It's important. How are you going to survive algebra and trig or calculus without algebra and trigonometry? 
like 1.2 is doing limits with like rational functions and doing you've got conjugates in there and factoring and reducing and there's a lot of shit in there that's just not like here's an hour let me teach you everything you need to know all right i assume that was long enough to give everyone a chance to write that down David's first letter is D with a value of 100. That's not quite what I wanted, is it? So I'm glad I checked this. So I didn't want that. Maybe I should do integer temp minus integer A. I think A is 97, but just doing it like, if you don't know, in A or ASCII value for a is 97. But rather than going and looking it up, we can just just fucking ask for the integer value. I might even be able to just say minus A. But now let me run it. I'm gonna, I, I, this should work. I'm gonna try it with the minus A as well. Nope, that didn't work. I tried casting A and it gave me a negative number. I'm going to try my, yeah, that was the next thing I was going to try. Doesn't like that. It's not my understanding of the actual value. Maybe try your trace. Oh, oh, is it? A race size? Try what? The character, like the two. Oh. You're just saying a variable. Right? Yeah, you're right. Let me try that. I might be able to try it without the, there we go. We got the three. Yeah, let me try it without the end. It sounds like Colin's already done it. Yeah. I'm going to leave the int in because it's a little like clearer of what the hell I'm fucking doing. So this, this is what we're going to grab. So I'll make a comment here. Next four lines. Let's take and make a function or any name. All right, so I'm going to copy this and go up here. We're going to make a bucket function. And it looks like it's got a return integer because it's returning the value. So integer, uh, we'll call it uh, first character. And we are going to pass in a string argument. I'll do it up here and then, well, fuck it. Let's just do it here and go down below and pro prototype and implementation. And I'm gonna paste, ah, shit. I recopied something else. Thank you, grab this. Okay, so I don't want string name to equal David. I want it to be arg. And I don't even, I already got the string coming in, so I probably don't need that line. I can probably go char temp equals arg. And I didn't even need that line because we did it here. So I'll call this char there and then comment out this line. <laughs> and then I don't need to have an integer value. I can just say return int temp minus int a. Let's 
So this will give me lowercase value of first character of name. <coughs> this returns the ASCII value of a character minus 97. <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, you have created your first hash function. And, ladies and gentlemen, and people that don't identify as either. There we go. Got to be PC. A lot of people laugh at it. I can get in trouble. Golf is being discriminatory of fucking non treating people the way they want to be identified. I don't know if anyone in here identifies as non binary or something like that. So why make the assumption? Ladies and gentlemen is the old way of saying it, but maybe we'll just say ladies and gentlemen and everyone that isn't a lady or a gentleman. How about that? That's just going with people sounds lame though. Subjects. Ladies, like lady and gentlemen, are supposed to be like a nice way of referring to a female or a male. So maybe we should say like distinguished people. Distinguished people sounds good. Yes. Distinguished guests. I would think more like or students. Yeah. My distinguished students. All right. So we got our first hash function. Let's go up and use this with our hash table. So I'm going to comment out this shit for the print multiples thing. We already saw how that worked. <coughs> We're going to get rid of this. And I need that. All right, so we got a vector string called names. So let's like take a look at passing in David. So if I want, I can do string name David. Nope, my name. String me equals David. You know where this is going, right? And my fa my hash function was called first char. So I want to go into what I'm going to do is find an integer value for that. Integer uh, me val equals first char. I'm going to pass in me. So this acts like the key. And this acts like the value. Together, hash functions are a lot like maps. Functions and tables are a lot like maps. But whereas a map, you can have everybody has a unique identifier, which is fine. Like if you have something like banner ID or social security number, it should be just fine. You have a giant map with a lot of fucking entries, but maybe you don't want that. So if you want a limited number of entries, the hash table is the equivalent of the map where you restrict the number of entries that you, like you don't have a, if we were doing student IDs, maybe we wouldn't do everyone had their own entry, but maybe we would go off of the first three numbers or the last three numbers or something like that. Oh, yeah, oh your last four. Your socials, we do last four for a lot of things. Uh, so maybe we do the last four of your, hash, or your, your student ID. All right. So how do I put this into my names? Names, I want it to go into the me val slot. 
and I want to push back me. And I'll make another one. String not me equals Padawan. Int not me val equals first char not me. And I can push back names. Bless you. So you guys see the key value pairs? But now rather than having a unique thing for the key, now we're having something that we're gonna have a lot more than one thing go in. <coughs> You could easily do this with something. Maybe we'll do this next class. On uh, Wednesday, no, Wednesday I will be here. Let me double check. We are interviewing people on Tuesday and Wednesday for a temporary position or a one year temporary full time position for a math teacher. In fact, we were inviting students to come and sit in on it through the, the sign club. I think they're still taking students. If you guys are free on the afternoon, tomorrow or Wednesday, uh, I'll have you email Mr. Blakely. If you wanna come and like judge, give a feedback on like a potential new hire, you can come and give feedback. You'll use a QR code after the lecture and just give feedback. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I will be done by the time I can, I don't have to cancel class on Wednesday, excellent. <laughs> well, wow, you don't have to come. I think we're going to do something fun on Wednesday. Like, remember us doing stuff with the loot tables and making like weapons and shit like that? Well, now, now we can make, a, make it with a hash foot table and like whatever weapon, like whatever category, we can have a lot of shit in there. Like rings, necklaces, any form of jewelry you want, shields. All sorts of stuff, clothing, shoulder pads, whatever we want to call it, it'll have its own number identifier. <clears throat> and we'll have a list or we'll have a hash table for loot. I don't know. That might be not so fun. We'll think about it. All right. So let's let's make a print thing for this. So I'm gonna say for int i equals zero. I less than 26. <clears throat> I plus plus. <clears throat> what I want to do is go into, um, I want to go into names I. and see out everything in it. <clears throat> so maybe I'm gonna change Padawan to a name that starts with D. That way I can test it. Uh, Daisy. All right, so if I want to print out the first one, I could do nine names I, but this is now a vector now. So it's kind of like names I at J. So maybe I need another loop here. 
or int j equals zero, j less than names bracket i dot size, j plus plus. So this should cycle through all the names in the ith category. I guess I can have the bracket there. Another closing bracket here. And we're going to do C out. Uh, names I at J. And maybe I'll make it look pretty. So I'm going to do like see out names starting with and I'll do a character version of I plus 97. And maybe I'll add a little roll of asterisks just so it has a little divider. <coughs> and I think after it goes through all the names, I want to have another little gap there. I think this is what will make it look pretty. And if it doesn't look like you think it's going to look, I'll edit it. All right, run. David and Daisy, okay. Now I think maybe showing all the names that it doesn't have, it's kind of pointless. So maybe we'll say, let's throw this in a if statement. If names bracket I, Uh, let's see, dot size, wait, empty. If names I is empty, this checks for emptiness. So maybe we'll say if names I is not empty, then we'll put this in here. If the ith letter has any names in it. Otherwise, skip. <clears throat> Juan, you went to NASA, right? Yeah, I'm Eli described Dr. Warmbrandt as another Mr. Redden. Is that, does it, it, doesn't it feel like he's got the same kind of energy as John? Yeah, the, the, you're talking about the, the cortex? Yeah. yeah he's, he's the tier, he's also the head of the entire aeromechanics branch. He he's like the head boss of one of the major divisions there. 
and he likes doing tours. He likes like telling people really shit. Yeah. You know, ask a question, and he'll be like, "Does anybody know why it's called not written by you?" And then he goes up to him and like, <laughs> 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 it gets like right in your face, and it's like just really intense. It's just like this. Face he's got, he's got, face. he's got red energy. <laughs> I can't I I heard he was talking about me, but I don't know what he said yet. <laughs> Did he explain it right? Uh, I bet he didn't. Uh he mentioned like you guys know what an MC is? Okay, so there's this guy who's I don't know, something something hammer like that, but... Did he say why he called me MC Hammer? No. Oh he didn't okay. He did. He did. He remembers me as MC Hammer. I don't think any other intern that summer had a fucking name, but like I stood out. He did a pop quiz on MC Hammer trivia. It was Hammer time, yeah. And it was I was the only one that was being grilled in this survey. And all the other interns were in the department were present. Normally we did like cool shit in the department. Just one of the last weeks of the summer, it was like we're gonna have a Hammer quiz. He was a lot of fun. All right. This should work. <coughs> Good. Didn't do all the other letters. So this seems like this is a lot of work to do each one. Is there a way of shortcutting this? So can I pass in something where I do like, let's see. Not me Val is what we had inside. It's doing first char, not me. So maybe I could just do first char one. And then push back. One. <laughs> the same kind of like syntax as the uh, Yeah. Where you have like a map. It very much has the same syntax as a map. It's just like a map. Just map has, can easily get up to damn near infinite number of fucking entries. <laughs> unique entries. <clears throat> we had enough people on the fucking planet. We could have, you know, quadra social security number that isn't nine digits, but 20 digits. And you could have a map that had still had that 20 digit value as your, well, we're going to need computers that like 20 digits. Yeah. Wait, what's the map on your it's not so maps work the same way, except maps just every every key is unique. Mm -hmm. Every key here does not need to be unique because what I'm doing is uh, I am grabbing the first character of the name and there's going to be a lot of people with names that start with J and they're all going to get pushed in the vector. So they're not all going to be ones. Mm -hmm. I might have a James. I might have a Jimmy. I might have a Joanna, a Jesse. Jill, Juanita, oh, that's pretty close to Juan. Let's see that work. Did that work? <coughs> yes, it did. And since we're doing it with vectors, <clears throat> we can do where we ask for a user response. Or uh, let's say, see out, please enter a name to store in the database. So hash tables are the equivalent of like a surgical scalpel versus like a sledgehammer, which is one. So it covers a larger, it covers a larger amount of like if you wanted to be very precise, you'd probably go with a hash table. If you want to cover a, a, a large amount of things, you'd probably... Precision is more map. Map, okay. 
you have to have a really large fucking maps are like a, a vector of vectors. So that's what it, okay. Map is a vector of vectors. The hash table is an array of vectors. So hash tables where you really like want to restrict, you don't want fucking social security numbers are fucking nine digits long, which is up to 999 million. You don't want a fucking vector that's 999 million entries in it. That's a fucking excessive. Maybe we group them just by the last four. Now we're down to 10,000. That's a much smaller database. Like, 10,000 seems large, but in terms of a database, not that large. Like, like phone numbers, you probably want to do a hash table, but based off like the area code? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Based it off the area code. But yeah, I you I could have used lists rather than vectors. I, I guess I guess I'm saying like there's really can you do a, a map of vectors, I guess. We could that's what we were doing. That's what you did on the you did on the test. We did a maps of vectors. So this is like when we don't want unlimited, like an unreasonable large number of things. Maybe we just want to clump by area code. Let, we'll do a phone number one next. That's a that's a fucking great one. Let's let's finish with this one though. We're gonna do names, first char, user response, pushback, user response. <clears throat> Why does it not like that? That's exactly why it doesn't like it. Like we don't even use CNs for char, you jackass. Right? Yeah. But we don't. That's well, I guess we do. Yes or no? <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. We don't use get line for char. Am I even doing this right? Shouldn't I be doing get line? How do I do get line? <laughs> I always just put string in my my library just in case I need it every time. So I don't have to go all the way. Right. I told him the end one time he stuck it up to go. He's like, why? He's like, why doesn't it rock not run in my thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, string library. Yeah. My name, Eli. Yeah, you thought I was talking to you, didn't you, LD? Mm -hmm. Prometheus. Prometheus, it is. Thanks, Eli. Prometheus. I think that's right. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I see the only thing I want to change now is I want to two upper this shit. That's just that's just making it pretty. What is capital A? The display is a lower, so it's the it's twenty six lower than the sixty five. Sixty two upper should work. I'm being lazy. <laughs> no. Rude. That was rude. All right, so two upper doesn't work. Yeah. 
Let's try that. Got too many there. All right, LD. You you knew this was coming. I set you up two minutes ago. You don't have a name yet? Not really. Um, LD, it is. There we go. We got E. <clears throat> All right. So let's make a function for a phone number. I, I, that was a great, great idea. So Preston's idea. Hash function for phone numbers. Based on area code. So I'm going to have an integer, uh, not my number, is 559-8675309. That's a fucking song. Eight six seven five three zero oh, nine. Yeah, no, yes, you you'll fucking you guys know fucking Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd, but not that song. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Chat GPT's list of books included *To Kill a Mockingbird*. I mean, that's the, Who in here besides fuck one liked that book? I liked it, but it's not hot. You fuck it. Well, what did you like about *To Kill a Mockingbird*? <laughs> Like the lawyer, I thought he was compelling. What? Okay. What about the story? What is it about the story that you like? Presentation of like racism at the time. That I tried to challenge it. It's kind of weird to start talking about normal life, isn't it? Yeah, yeah like, 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 when we're watching a movie, it was just like, they're just kicking back. Movie's one thing. Reading the book on it is completely fucking different. All right, we now we want a hash function. So how would I strip off the first three numbers? I could make it a string. I don't want to make it a string, though. I want to challenge you. How could I pull off the first three numbers of this? What do you want to start at the beginning and then have a note that says here? So, how many would the first three be? The first three is right here. That is seven letters or seven characters. Yeah. Okay, so if you if you do get those first three numbers, how are you is your hash function just gonna be to add them together? Our hash function would that's what it's gonna return. Oh I got you. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you. Uh, okay. Uh, so it's seven numbers. I knew that already. Seven numbers would be like ten million. So maybe I could say let's just check it out. Temp temp num equals not my number. Uh, divided by 10 million. And I'm going to do see out in line and line temp number. I just want to see if that returns the 559. Why will it return zero? It returned 130. That is not my fucking number. Yeah, I'm going to go with long int.
this one we should be able to use regular int because it's only going to be three numbers. Nope. Try what? I didn't want to do that though. Not if I treat the integer as it. Let's try double. Because in this one will still do integer division and. Oh, you're right. It doesn't like it already. Ah, it worked. I don't like that it printed it out in scientific fucking notation. Maybe if you take off the one and put it. Nope. How about just long? Huh. Just adamant about fucking scientific notation. So how could I create the phone number? How could I dump that? How could I get just the phone number left? This gave us the 559. So maybe we could go with a phone number equals not my number minus temp number times 10, 10 million. Because we divided by 10 million to get the 559. So that chopped off the last nine digits. So here we're going to subtract 559 seven zeros. That didn't work. Still didn't work. There we go. <clears throat> so we were able to break it up into area code and phone number. So when people pass in their phone number as 10 digits, let's turn this into a hash function real quick. It's working. We'll fucking find trim, trim it later. We got 10 minutes left. I want to make this work. So I'm going to come up here and do int uh, area code. And it looked like we were taking in a, it wasn't just a double. What was it? <laughs> the long double. We'll come down here and we'll make an area code.
And that's what we're dealing with. So I want int temp. I don't need the, I don't need that. But not my number goes here. And not my number is the argument here. And I don't need the C outs. So what I want to do is return. I don't even need this. I just needed the arg. I, I needed temp number. That's what we wanted. We wanted the area code. So return temp. And it looks like I could probably just say return arg divided by 10 million. Don't think I need that. Maybe we'll do a uh, int uh, phone uh, without area. And we'll take in the long double arg. And I'm going to put this down there. And rather than returning this, we're not going to return that. We're going to do this. So return phone number. So effectively, I can call this for my key. And I would call this for my value, my phone number for value. <clears throat> And I know this is just the implementation. I need to take this up there and put it up top with the prototype. But I don't want to do that before everyone's had a chance to bask in the glory that is I. Oh. Gus is over here listening to something else. My father got headsets in. <laughs> it's a yeah, but it's the side facing me. But again, he's there. That's better. <laughs> this motherfucker's got killing Mockingbird on audio. So I was just listening to an audio book this last week called uh, "It's called Morning Wood." Everybody loves large chess. It's about a mimic. If you played Dark Souls, you know what a mimic is. It's a treasure chest that isn't really a treasure chest. It eats anything that comes close. So the main character is a mimic that gets starts gaining levels like a character would in a video game, gets like a warlock skill, is able to summon a succubus, ends up summoning the succubus who also has her own form of a large chest. The mimic is a large chest. Uh, but he summons the succubus, and since he likes to eat everything, he immediately eats her. And he does it like she tastes good, like strawberries or something. So he summons her like a shitload of times. And so many times, like succubus, they're like, you're summoning a demon. So like demons like want to control the person summoning them. He summons the fucking succubus so many times that she gets Stockholm syndrome and fucking no longer wants to torture or take over the master. And so eventually he learns to talk and he calls her snack. It's fucking great. He addresses her as snack because he fucking likes to eat her. She tastes like fucking the tasty dish. Great. It's a great story. No, not. No, do not let a child listen or read that book. There's some sex parts in there because one of them is a succubus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, no, not for children. All right, so, okay. 
No one's talking anymore. Let me go up here and prototype that shit. And let's use that down here. So I got lung double is not my number. Let's make a vector of unsigned long ints. And we'll call this my phone book. And it's an array in 559. So we could have up to 999. Right? Uh, but you know what? Yeah. But like if I do this 999, if I have an area code of 999, I don't think there's an area code of 999. But let's say there is, that's only going to be 998 on the array. So maybe let's make this a thousand. And I will do my phone book. We're doing area code. On area code, we're passing in, not my number. And then we're going to push back. Why does that not like it? I'm using parentheses, not brackets. Uh, I am pushing back. What was the name of the function? I called it. There was area code and phone without area. Of not my number. And I'm going to, where is our print thing? I'm going to take this and I'm going to adapt it to do phone numbers. Uh, so this is my phone book. We're going from zero to a thousand. Maybe I should, so, I don't know. Like the area code is not going to line up. Area code zero is going to go with zero, zero. I guess it goes with zero, zero, zero. So I guess it does line up. Uh, so my phone book, I, maybe I need to go 1,001. Uh, phones, phone numbers with area code. And here, we're just going to take it's my phone book I dot first. No, it isn't. It's just my phone book I. What the value is there. And here, we're doing my phone book I. What? I don't know why. Sometimes it has an error and so it doesn't mean to. But it very much doesn't like what I did. And it's all about 76. So what did I do on 76? My phone book dot I. It just means it's a vector. 
Look at the big brains on you. So it didn't like something. Area code 1000. Maybe I can't go to area code. Maybe it is. Maybe I do got to cap it at 999. Yeah, we're getting out of bounds. We're out of time. I'm going to change this to 999. And I think we'll be good if I change that to 1000 or 999. That's the problem. I was all right. This needed to be a thousand. <laughs> Bam! Good choice, Preston. Now we got a phone number database set up with using hash tables. So we'll do it with other shit with objects now rather than just standard you know data types and oh maybe two dimensionalize this shit yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah like matrix i was thinking rather than vector 